Dr. Katrina Merkies is a researcher and associate professor at the University of Guelph. She has conducted various equine behavior studies, and the one we're talking about today is whether ponies can distinguish different human facial expressions. Welcome, Dr. Merkies, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So can you briefly describe this research project and how it came about? This was a study that was done by my master's student, Abby Hodder. And um, there had been some studies done on how horses respond to photographs of different human facial expressions, but I was really interested in how horses would respond to live humans. And um, Abby was interested to take this project on, so she went ahead and, and did the research on that. And we also had a wonderful research assistant, Yulia Sudorenko from the Ukraine, who was sponsored by the MyTax Global Link program, and she helped out with all the data collection. Can you give us some background on how the right and left sides of the brain work in humans and, and how that compares to horses? Sure. Uh, to keep it simple, um, both horse and human brains are, are similar in that they're divided into two hemispheres, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. And each hemisphere is responsible for processing certain information that we take in from our environment. So in terms of behavior, uh, generally the right brain processes emotions um, and particularly negative stimuli, whereas the left brain is more related to uh, social interactions and learned behavior. So, for example, things like feeling embarrassed or feeling in love would excite more neurons in your right brain, while things like uh, knowing which fork to use at a fancy dinner, <laughs> you would rely on your left brain. Um, so as far as we know, these general rules hold true in all vertebrates. Can you explain why horses were a good subject for this study based on how their vision works? Yeah. So. Most people are aware that horses see um, uh, with the left eye things on their left side and with the right eye things on their right side, and they, they don't really have a lot of binocular um, vision, so just a little narrow spot in the middle. And this is because the optic nerve, that's the nerve that brings information from the eye to the brain, it crosses um, from the left eye to the right side of the brain and from the right eye to the left side of the brain. Um, so that's how we get the processing from one eye in the opposite side of the brain. And where those nerves cross, um, there's in horses, it's accepted that there's very little fusion in those nerves. So that's why they don't have binocular uh, view and they don't have depth perception. Whereas in humans, um, those two nerves that cross, they actually do fuse, and that's why we have binocular vision. So in horses, um, because their eyes are located really on the sides of their head, it's very clear to us that what they're seeing with their left eye is being processed in the right brain. And what they see with the right eye is being processed in the left brain. Can you describe the ponies and the humans in this study and what their backgrounds were? Sure, we used 20 ponies and we stuck to just using ponies to keep some uniformity to the subjects. And they were all lesson uh, horses, ponies <laughs> used at a local riding school. So they were all in one location. They were all kept in the same um, management style. They lived outside 24 seven uh, in groups. They ranged in age from six to 25 years. And all of the ponies were familiar with being ridden, but some of them were obviously a lot more experienced uh, than others. And actually it, it, it wasn't 50-50. I think we had 12 and eight or something like that, um, experienced ponies versus green ponies. So that allowed us to compare if experience made a difference in how they would respond to the things that they saw. In terms of our actors, we had two uh, human actors, both female, and they were fairly similar in appearance. And they wore the same clothing during the test. So again, to minimize outside distractions um, that the ponies would see. 
both of our actors had experience with horses, uh, but one actor had a lot more experience handling horses than the other one. Did these actors meet the ponies before they started showing them these various facial expressions? No, the actors didn't meet the ponies before they were tested, um, but we did prime the ponies to encourage them to approach humans because we wanted to make sure that um, we did have some interaction between the pony and the human rather than them just totally ignoring the human. Um, so we did this using clicker training. Uh, so actually I clicker trained the ponies and um, using a, a clicker, we'd click and give them a carrot reward. And we repeated this until the ponies learned to approach me as soon as they heard a click uh, and to approach any human as soon as they heard a click. And that way we used a click right at the start of each trial to ensure that the pony would actually um, focus on the actor. What expressions or emotions did the actors in your study use on the ponies? And what were the results? We used three facial expressions. We had joy, sadness, and anger, along with a neutral face as a control. And our actors were trained to use specific muscles that relate to each facial expression. There's um, a facial action coding system, which um, tells which muscles will uh, you, you will use for each expression. So they were trained to do that. And then uh, they individually, they showed one of the facial expressions for one minute in random order to each of the 20 ponies individually. So the ponies were loose in a small pen and the actor sat on a chair just outside of the pen. And we recorded the pony's heart rate and we videotaped each test so that we could later look at the videos and uh, score specific behaviors that the ponies exhibited, including which eye the pony used first to look at the actor, um, how long they looked at the actor, how long it took them to approach the actor, how close they got, um, we looked at ear, uh, if they turned their ear toward the actor and any oral behaviors like licking and chewing. So what did our results show? Um, according to our, our hypothesis, they did indeed look with their left eye first toward angry and sad faces, while they used their right eye to look at the joy face. And the eye that they used to look at the neutral face was actually 50-50. Uh, so that was really kind of cool that it worked out exactly like we had predicted. Um, the ponies looked longer and more often um, with their left eye at the angry faces. That is, they would, they would look at the angry face and then look away and then look at the angry face and look away. So they did that more often compared to um, the right eye looking at joy faces. They had more licking and chewing with neutral faces and they focused their ears more on the actor and stood farther away from joy or sad. And interestingly, there was no effect of any of the facial expressions on their heart rate. Were there differences in how the older or more seasoned lesson ponies reacted compared to the younger or greener ones? Yeah, the ponies that had more experience as a lesson mount, they had lower average heart rates, so no effect of the facial expression, but just in general, they had lower heart rates. Um, and they also had a higher frequency of licking and chewing, uh, and they did keep their ear on the actor more. So this shows us that probably habituation plays a, a big role. They're more experienced, they're used to, well, we're coming out in the arena, and this was a little bit different than a, a normal riding lesson, but, you know, it's kind of, nothing much uh, phases them. But they did keep their ear on the actor more because it was a little bit of a different situation and, you know, they just want to know what's going to be coming next. <laughs> um, whereas the ponies with less experience, they wouldn't have that habituation to just coming out in the arena and doing stuff. Um, and they were more interested in their environment um, in general, not specifically to the actor. Well, thank you, Dr. Murky. In closing, is there anything you would like to emphasize, sum up, or take a glance into the future of behavioral studies? 
think that the results from this study are probably not that surprising, um, but it is supported by other studies that they use photographs of humans. So this was the first time that we showed the same results using live humans. And I think it's important to note that although the horses did respond to the different facial expressions and they, they clearly distinguish between them, that doesn't necessarily mean that they understand what we're feeling or that they feel what we feel. <laughs> um, so they, they may respond um, more to an angry face. But that doesn't mean that they feel your anger. And that there are other um, things that they take into consideration. So it's not just looking at the facial expression, but it's looking at the way that you move your body, um, what else is happening in the environment. So they use lots of different cues to put together how to respond in any particular moment. Um, it's interesting that facial expressions are highly conserved across species. So even though we can have very different physiognomy, um, that is, we look very different, uh, you know, mouse compared to a horse, compared to a human, uh, but facial expressions are, are fairly similar, which is very interesting um, and very helpful because if you can understand the facial expression from another uh, being or another species, then you can know how to respond appropriately. Mm -hmm.